first step for putting on the power feed, I'm gonna have to pull the scales off. So I've gone ahead and I've loosened everything up and pull these off. I've not had this off yet. It's actually a little nerve wracking. But in order for me to put the stops on for the power feed, the stops actually have to go on the front. So I'm going to reverse, well, not really reverse, I'm going to put the, the scales mounted to the back here, which I think will actually work out quite a bit better anyway. But the only problem being that they will cover the coolant drain holes. That seems to be right about where the uh, the holes line up. So I'll have to figure out a solution for that. But I'll be able to pull these off. Then the uh, the sensor actually sits right here. Then it's got stops that are basically like these that go on each side. But now I've got that off. I gotta figure out how to mount it on the back. So that'll be the next step. While I have everything torn apart, I'm gonna go ahead and do some uh, cleanup. Um, There's just some WD-40 and a, a scotch brake pad and just kind of going over, getting any of the crusty stuff off. A little bit of rust developed under the, the um, vise and that kind of stuff. So just a little bit of general cleanup. While I've got everything apart, it's a good time to do some of the, the deeper cleaning maintenance. You can tell where the, the vise was always sitting right here as it's uh, actually a little bit pitted. So I just want to make sure that the, the rust isn't above the, the surface of the table. Pretty much all the rest of the table and even where the, the rust was, you can still see the original scrape marks in it. So it's in really good shape all things considered. figured out part of the reason they had the the scales were mounted to the front here. So I know they used to run coolant due to the little bit of rust that was on here. And uh, the coolant drain holes here pretty much would have lined up exactly with the the rails or the, the scales on the back of the bridge port. Now what I did, which will probably throw off a lot of OCDs, I actually just moved the, all the scales down, you know, about a an inch or so. So instead of the, the screw would have been going pretty much right into the, the drain hole here. Now this one at least leaves this drain hole open. Well, this drain hole is technically covered. I don't really use coolant anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. So the hole down in here. Is technically going to be covered. So another thing I do wish I would have swapped this prior to putting on the way covers. I would have done the holes differently down here. What I ended up having to do is chop out this little section here for the, the stationary part of the scale. Now I, oh, one nice thing so this is the old mounting bracket. So there was a special mounting bracket that allowed uh, scale sensor piece. I'm not sure what that's called, but to so that it would actually mount vertically because it's only meant for a flush mount 
but yet this is angled so there's a little angle bracket I'm sure it was probably part of a custom kit or, or maybe even just a, a standard kit but it mounted right here a quick double check of the power feed and it's going to line up with those holes exactly so this will be the mounting bracket for or the mounting spot for that and then in the little bags of goodies here these two little stops that will go on each end next up is going to be pulling that far end apart and mounting in the power feed Alright, I'm headed into some hard, uncharted territory, for me anyway. part here. It all looks fairly good. It's kind of dirty so I'm going to come in and clean this up a little bit. Then I'll uh, start working on getting the, the new power feed version mounted onto here. time to actually mount the power feed. There was two uh, little spring pins in here or roll pins or whatever they're called. Um, I just kind of set them in place in here or in the uh, power feed and then they will match up with holes in the mounting plate hopefully.
Does this hammer make my hands look big? Alright, I'm going to need a tube that I can use to press that in there a little better. Next up is the, uh, the original dial gauge here. It comes with some shims as well, so what the shims do is set this far enough away. So I already kind of measured this out. but So the shims go in there. Then that, once this is pressed in snug, it'll be ju just have enough clearance away from here that it'll be visible. And then the lock ring for it. There, so now you can loosen it, zero it as needed, and then be able to spin. The only other pieces that I have So that did something not good. I think was tightening this up a little bit too tight. No. Nope. Alright, so that's most likely the shims that I need inside here. So I gotta be able to pull all of this back apart now get that key out, which I was having a little bit of issue, that's why I kind of decided I'd give it a try without doing the key. So I have to get that key out of there and get those shims into there. So. Alright, so I'm going to pull it all back apart. that key out of there set him up there so the directions say to put two shims into here so I'm a little bit worried about uh, you know if it's exactly two or if that's you know the approximate or whatever um, if I press this under there it's gonna be hell to get it back off so I'm gonna go ahead and just I'll follow the directions as they say I'll put the two shims in there and hopefully everything will line up okay I think that'll do it for me. Take that key back into there. So I got all the shims in place here that I need. Now that I've had that key in and out, that seemed to go on a lot easier. Real final test.
still turns. All right, so now, now when I turn the crank, I can hear the, the motor inside spinning. I don't know if you can hear that or not. It's a little slightly different sound to it. So the next part will be to give it a try. All right, so I quickly uh, plugged it in back here. Now we can turn it on and see how it goes. Hopefully, hopefully that's the right way. Let's come back this way. perfect it's just clearing all of the uh, the mounting bracket here exactly where it's supposed to and that's power feed emergency stop up here is what's cutting that off all right So other than uh, tying up a few of these loose ends and getting everything kind of tacked away, that's, that's it. I got power feed now on the mill. Very nice. I'm excited about that.